Hey guys, what is going on? I am Audio Guru, and I'm pretty excited today because I want to bring to you uh, Pro Tools First, which is Pro Tools First free version of Pro Tools, or Avid's first version of Pro Tools. Now, who is this for? I'll tell you, and this is exactly off of Avid's website. It's ideal for singers, songwriters, and musicians who are new to recording or musicians who have always wanted to try Pro Tools. I remember a long time ago when it was Pro Tools fucking six or seven. I wanted to use Pro Tools, but I didn't have the money and I couldn't use it. So I went with the Sonar instead. And I was a Sonar user for many, many years because it was a lot cheaper. Now you can try Pro Tools for free, which is what a lot of people have been asking for for years and years and years. But Avid, thank you. You've finally done it. And we are appreciative of that. Now, when I say it's for free, it sounds awesome. However, there are some limitations which Avid have to put on or else they'll be just giving away their really good software for free. Today, I'm going to go through what is actually included in Pro Tools first and what's not. So first off, we're going to go to inputs and tracks and things like that. The maximum amount of simultaneous audio tracks that you can have is 16. You, can, you can't have any more than 16 on the screen at the same time. There are ways around this, which uh, I'll probably do some videos on later on down the track for you, all you new guys who are just checking out Pro Tools or recording software in general for the very first time. I'll do some videos for you guys. So there is a workaround, but it's a little bit tedious and, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's nothing basically. Okay, so moving on. Maximum amount of inputs is going to be four, which basically isn't so bad. I mean, if you want to record a drum kit, you're, you're basically screwed unless you can find a workaround. Uh, but for the most part, most of the ge general interfaces that you can buy are either two channel or quad channel or four channel, I should say. That's that's not too bad. I mean, so you can, if you, you've got an M box or something like that or a a audio box USB like I have, you guys are fine. And when I say that, all of these are compatible. They do support third party uh, interfaces, so you don't have to get Avid only hardware. That's great news, but moving on, uh, the maximum amount of inputs, as I said, was four. The maximum amount of instrument tracks is 16, MIDI tracks is 16, and auxiliary tracks is 16. So, for each type of these tracks, you can only have 16 of each. So, uh, buses are unlimited, same as Pro Tools. Uh, there is no video support. So, sorry guys, who wanted to do video, you won't be able to do it here. So, general, maximum supported projects or sessions. In any other version of Pro Tools, you can just do as many as you like and save it onto your uh, hard drive. But with Pro Tools first, you're limited to three. Now, these three projects are stored in the cloud, or Avid's cloud somewhere. You can only have access to these three at any given time. You can purchase more from Avid if that's what you want, or you can delete one and reuse that one. So, but you can only have a maximum of three happening at any one time. If you're like, just like a musician or something, that, that shouldn't be too bad. I mean, you can quickly record your song, slap it onto a CD, and then delete that project and then you've got three to use again. The maximum sample rate is 32-bit, uh, 96 kilohertz, as opposed to Pro Tools, which is 32-bit, 192 kilohertz. ASIO, Core Audio, and Yukon support for third-party interface and control services. Integration, yes, yes, yes. What type of plugins does it take? AAX Native and AAX Audio Suite, which is the same as Pro Tools 12. It does come with the basic Pro Tools plugins, which I will show you now. So, uh, on inserts, we go to, uh, we've got EQs, which is one of the best EQs you can actually get, and you're getting it for free. Even though I have a whole ton of plugins, uh, which I've brought over the years, which are fantastic. The Pro Tools EQ and compressor, which I'll also show, is absolutely fantastic. Here is the compressor. Now, for you guys that haven't used this stuff before, these are fantastic uh, effects. I have to say, absolutely wonderful to use. They sound great. 
and they do exactly what they're designed to do. So you don't have to go and buy extra stuff. What you get in the box for basic recording and editing is absolutely fantastic. So what else do we have? We have reverb, we have the which is uh, Dverb. That's uh, Avid's version of reverb, which is also again really good. It's really easy to use. You've got this wet dry mix here, which is um, which you want to be playing with because you don't want to have just the reverbs coming through rather than the actual dry sound itself. But again, a really good plugin. You, there's a lot out there that are probably better than this one, but this one is great just out of the box and for free. I still can't believe that they, they're giving this stuff away for free. It's great. So they've got uh, Mod Delay 3 Mono or Stereo, which is just a delay. Uh, what else do we have? Sorry guys, I'm kind of rushing through this, but uh, I want to try and get it down to a short video. Uh, so we do have Dither. Um, I'll go through Dither in a later video because uh, it's a little bit hard to explain. Uh, we do have some instruments, uh, Click 2, which is a click track, and Waves Rewire, which is something else entirely. And we have a signal generator, which is again for a bit more in-depth stuff, and trim. And down here you can go to Avid Marketplace so you can buy more stuff, but we're not going to do that right now. Okay, so that's what comes with Pro Tools first in the sense of plugins. As I said, these are for free and these are really good plugins. If you want to get more, you can go and get more, but that has to be AAX supported, which uh, is kind of limiting, but I think Avid wants to shift it towards the way they want to do it. And I kind of get it. So let's go into some features now. I know I'm bumbling on a little bit, but let's get into it. So. All of your composing and editing features are in here. So let's go here. So basically all of your mixing tools are all there. So you can do all of this stuff, basically. It's all there. All of your tools are here to use. And that's basically what they're saying there. So loop record and track comping is there. You do have the MIDI editor, although you do not have the Sibelius score editor. Unfortunately, that is not included. They do have elastic time and elastic pitch, which is great. Automatic delay compensation there is there, sorry, at 16K. But the one thing that is missing that has really made me frown a little bit is beat, detect beat detective. Because I use that all the time. It is a really useful tool. However, it, guys, it's free. Come on. Let's move along. Quick Punch is available. Uh, Workspace is available, which is uh, where you get all your stuff from, like uh, audio files and things like that, and loops and whatever. Which is great, which it's just like accessing your hard drive and getting stuff into it. There is no clip gain in Pro Tools first, which is kind of a bum. But anyways, there is no MP3 option. There's no export to iTunes. There is no export to SoundCloud. However, you can do an offline bounce. So the only way to get your stuff out of Pro Tools is basically to bounce it offline. And once it's offline, do what you like with it. It's, But you, you don't have any of that support which you would normally get in Pro Tools 12. It does not have Avid Video Engine. Uh, it does not have variable stereo pan depths. You cannot do uh, surround mixing, it's not in there. So basically, as you get more into the advanced stuff, it's just not there anymore, guys. Interfaces, let's talk about hardware support. It supports all of your usual uh, Avid interfaces, such as the Mbox or whatever. It supports the 11 rack, it supports the fast track, and it also supports third party stuff. So if you have an audio interface from a third party, like I do, I have the Audiobox USB from PreSonus. It will work. For anyone that's interested, that particular one will work. I know that because I'm actually using it over here. Uh, that's what I use to record. So that's all supported. Now, Pro Tools does not support control surfaces by the look of it, which is kind of a bum, except it does. It does support the Yukon protocol, which is uh, like your Pro Tools S6, uh, System 5, 
S5 Fusion and all that stuff, but that get, that's getting really damn expensive. But it doesn't support any third-party uh, interfaces by the look of it. Uh, not interfaces, sorry, control surfaces. So if you want actual manual control of your faders and stuff, you will not be able to do it with Pro Tools first. Okay, so we've pretty much gone over everything and it's been a bit of a dragged out video but in the near future I'll be going through because this is aimed at guys that are new to audio recording so I'm going to do some really basic videos on how to get into Pro Tools, get it up and running and how to start making songs. It's how to edit it a little bit and use effects and things like that so if you're interested in that please go ahead and subscribe and that will help me out tremendously. Leave a few comments, let me know what you want to know, and I will make a video if I can, and if I have time. This is Pro Tools First. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's been a little bit rushed, a little bit <laughs> kind of crazy, but well, that is what it is. Now, I'll leave links in the description below, so if you haven't got this version already, you can go ahead and get it. It is free, and if you're new to it, download it and Stick along with my channel and we'll go right through how to use it. So thanks for watching guys, I am Audio Guru and I'll see you in the next video.